Hey everybody, I'm going to make a few part video series for you guys on different ways that you all can add color to your ideas here on your page. Now, a couple of things. Um, so I've got my oil pastel set over here. I've got some notebook paper to clean them off. I have my preliminary exercise that I did before about using oil pastel versus colored pencil to, to fade in, um, I call it a circle fade, but really it's like the start of creating a sphere. And then I also have my, um, my colored pencils over here set and ready to go. So what I have already done is I've sort of assessed the situation at hand. Okay. And what I mean by that is I've sketched everything in here. I've already sharpied all of my pencil lines. This is looking pretty good. And I realized within my drawing, I had a lot of really small things here that I wanted to shade in, use like a little bit of shading techniques, color them in. And I was like, okay, so I have something that looks like this, right? An oil pastel, all right, um, you know, versus a colored pencil, okay? And I thought to myself, hmm, which one of these, oil pastel or colored pencil, would be best for filling in small places and spaces. Hmm, probably the one with a point, right? So I chose for my smaller areas, my smaller areas of illustration, because they are so small and detailed, I did fill them in with colored pencil. Okay, so the plane, Eiffel Tower, pyramids, uh, Big Ben here in London, all of that I did in colored pencil because these areas were small and detailed. Okay. Can you use colored pencil in your final? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but use it, um, use it strategically, right? Use it where you see fit in terms of doing smaller places in detail, trying to do smaller shading, etc. Okay. Now, um, the first section of this video, I think what I'm going to do is choose colors for my iris. Okay. Now, some students may have filled this in already first prior to doing this. Um, if you haven't started adding color at all, I would recommend that you, in any small places that you have, do the colored pencil first and then try and do your oil pastel second. Um, the reason being, as you guys know, just from working with oil pastel, anytime you work with oil pastel, it kind of generates all these crumblies, which go everywhere and they stick to your paper and make your paper different colors. So doing colored pencil in small areas first may be a better, a better artistic choice overall. Okay. Since I have done that already, I'm going to choose colors for my iris. Okay. Now, a couple of notes about choosing your iris color. Remember, you have options as an artist. So is what I have represented here, is this an optimistic perspective? So a perspective that's good. Is it a neutral or an indifferent perspective? Um, or is it a pessimistic perspective, meaning maybe not quite so good? This right here is representing that I love, love, love to travel. Um, I'm really sad right now that that's kind of off of, you know, off of my to-do list. So I'm going to choose colors that are uh, a little bit more bright and vibrant for my iris. Now, I was thinking about this before I made this video and... I'm thinking I'm either torn between something, um, an analogous color fade like this, or maybe even like a pink into a purple sort of situation. I don't even know. So I'm going to, I'm going to think on it while I explain this. So when you're doing a fade like this for your iris, and I would highly recommend um, one of the criteria I think for this assignment is that you have a fade of some kind, whether it's an oil pastel or colored pencil for your iris part. Um, you know, choose choose colors, optimistic, neutral, or uh, pessimistic. Obviously, if you're doing optimistic colors, you wanna choose colors that are more bright and vibrant. Um, for indifferent, you're going to choose something that's neutral, browns, greens, grays, things like that. And for maybe a pessimistic perspective, anything that would be um, on the darker end. So this could be blues, purples, darker greens, um, dark, dark, dark. So because this is something I love, I think I'm going to keep it to my warmer colors. And 
actually, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep it to, um, I think I'm going to try purple and pink and I don't know how successful I'm going to be with this. So, um, the other thing that you guys can choose is you can choose like, um, a color into white, kind of like I did here. I'm going to choose an analogous set, so colors that are side by side on the color wheel. Um, remember, these color combos could be orange to yellow, yellow to green, green to blue, blue to violet, violet to red, red to orange, and orange back to yellow. Um, keep in mind, you can also blend pink. Pink is a lighter version of red, so you can blend pink to purple or pink to um, orange. You can also do pink to red since pink is a lighter version of red. Now this may be hard for me to use here. So I, we, you may see me struggle with that. This is why we taped our oil pastels. All right. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do to fill in this iris area, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do purple to pink. Um, I'm just kind of scribbly scribbling this off. And I'm going to do this here. Yeah, this is going to be a giant pain. I wonder if I have tape around here. Mm. All right, I can do it. I can do anything. Okay. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to choose my darker color. Okay, the darker of the two to do my base fade for this. All right, so I'm going to choose purple and then I'm going to use the pink as my blender. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this thoughtfully and I'm going to have to fade around some of these objects. Okay. So toward the outermost part of my iris, it's the hardest pressure. You know what? I'm just going to do one half at a time, just like I taught you. I need to follow my own rules here. Okay. So hardest pressure toward the outside. And then I'm going to let up to medium pressure as I go across and keep in mind, um, I'm fading behind these objects. I'm also fading in a curved fashion, right? Because I want this to appear curved, um, at the end. So I'm letting up to less pressure all right this is looking pretty decent i did accidentally go over my plane sad day oh my gosh i might be able to fix that a little bit later on Here we go. Okay, so I'm keeping this um, lighter pressure and almost straight up and down towards the middle. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. Now before, um, I'm actually gonna flip my paper, as you guys know, that's something I like to do. Before I do that though, um, this base fade doesn't fade quite as much as I would like it to. All right, so right in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of transitional pressure. So I'm going to fill this in with like medium, more of my medium pressure, just so when I bring in my second color a little bit later on, that, you know, I have a little bit more of a, um, something that fades gradually, more of a gradual fade. Move this into abruptly. All right. Do a little bit more down here. Nice. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. Okay, um, I'm actually going to make this darker down here before I flip my paper. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so curved fashion, hard, medium, light. I will flip it over. And um, I'm doing the same thing on this side. And you're kind of watching me struggle as well, um, you know, with trying to fade around these objects. You really do need to think about what you're doing. So, um, you know, it's harder for me because I'm talking to you guys and doing this at the same time. But just be aware that, you know, your oil pastel is going to want to go everywhere. So you really got to think about controlling it. All right. So I'm doing hard pressure here. I'm also going to do hard pressure 
here. And I'm going to start to curve, um, curve my strokes and let up my pressure. And um, part of the reason why I would like to encourage you guys to use oil pastel for the iris, if you can. Now, I do realize for some folks that, um, you know, your iris may be too small to do, you know, oil pastel well. Use that as the medium. Uh, oil pastel, as you guys know, just by looking at this right here on the page, it just creates this very bright and vibrant effect that you can't achieve as well with the colored pencil. So it's really going to create a, if you use the oil pastel, it's really going to create a more um, like vibrant and eye-catching eye, eye, if that's even a thing. Okay. So right now, this is what I have. This is not the best base fade in the world, but I did the best that I could around my objects. Um, I have, you know, hard, medium, and light pressure. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do at this point is bring in my pink oil pastel on top. Now, as you guys know and remember, um, the second color always sort of acts as the blender. So I'm going to press pretty hard with this and try and curve my strokes. And then what I'm most likely going to have to do is bring the purple back in a little bit later on. And, um, you know, bring that back in on a little bit on top of the pink just to make sure I haven't lost my initial color because sometimes that happens. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, let me flip this back around. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my second color. And so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to press very, very hard. I'm going to go slow with this. And again, pressing hard is the beauty of the oil pastel because you get this really bright, vibrant, amazing color. Okay. So already this is starting to bring this serious pink back in, kind of from a sunset type fade here. Okay, it's looking good. Bringing this around the pyramids here. I have not been to the Great Pyramids. That would be awesome. I would love to do that someday. All right, that's looking good. Um, I'm going to try and bring it in between the wings here of my plane. Nice. Okay, so this is about a, as close as I can get it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, bringing it hard down here as well. And so just a reminder, press hard with your second color. You must, must, must press hard. If you're doing oil pastel, you must press hard with your second color. Otherwise, it just looks weirdly scratchy and scraggly like this. Okay. So I'm going to bring it up here and then I'm going to go behind the plane and then I'm going to paper flip. <sighs> All right. Now at this point in time, what I'm going to go ahead and do is flip my paper. Okay because it's just easiest for me. You do not have to do this. I'm just telling you what works for me. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this around the Eiffel Tower. Bring it around here, pressing really hard. Pressing really hard here. And again, I'm trying to curve my strokes um, similar to what we practiced. And it's very hard to do around all these objects. So I'm just going to, this is very, very, what you're doing is very, very hard. All right. And then, all right, I have have this right here. Okay. So ta-da, this is what I have.
okay? I think I want to put a little bit more of this pink right here, right here, and right here. Okay, so this is what I have so far. This is looking pretty good. Now, one thing I want you to do before um, we do anything else is come back in with your initial color and look for where there may need to be areas um, of hard pressure or um, medium pressure that maybe you lost. So coming back in with hard, medium, and light in certain areas just intensifies your fade. So it makes it a little bit more dramatic. Okay. Um, one thing I'm going to encourage you all to do is toward the top of your iris here where the eyelid covers it, make it a little bit darker. Okay. There's always that shadow that occurs on um, the iris just from the eyelid covering it. So I'm going to make this top area, I'm going to deepen it with my original color. I'm pressing hard right now with this, and then I'm going to fade it out. Ooh, that, that's starting to look really good. Fading it out in here, fading it out. Okay. You can even do a uh, same sort of type of thing down here at the bottom where the eyelid covers it, um, bottom eyelid covers it. Oh no, I just colored on Big Ben. Help! Okay, so this is what I have so far. This looks really good. Um, it kind of looks a little creepy, which is great. So I have um, some colors that are a little bit maybe more optimistic. Actually, this is kind of a little bit more moody than I wanted it to be, but that's all right. So definitely not depressing by any means. Um, I chose an analogous color set for this. I did it in oil pastel. You saw me fade out with my darker color, bring my lighter color in, then tweak it a little bit and add a shadow here. And um, what I want you really to think about is um, really doing your small detailed things with your colored pencil and then using your oil pastel and those techniques that you know to do the larger areas iris if possible um but really kind of get those color fades in there with the with the oil pastel